It is Tuesday, September 30th, 2014. I just dropped my mom off at the airport, and uh, we're on the return trip, going up a really, really steep hill on uh, the south side of Lafayette, New York, on Route 81. Uh, so we're doing you know, 75 to 80 miles an hour on the highway, as, as we do, and uh, just kind of doing our thing. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to take a look at was how the temperature was doing. Um, so the car has driven a total of 60 miles at the moment, uh, 59.6 according to my trip meter. Um, and. Uh, where you know, it's pretty much continuous highway driving for all of that uh, up to the airport and back. Um, so we're going to have you know, close to 80 miles, I'm guessing, uh, maybe a little higher, uh, just all highway miles. That's a good baseline for temperature. And as you can see, there are massive hills, uh, both up and down, that we're uh, doing here. And as I always do, I'm trying to keep the RPMs up on the uh, the motor, uh, the RPMs stay right in the 4,000 to 5,000 range um, at this speed in fourth gear. Uh, so that kind of works out for keeping that airflow as much as we can through that poor little net gain warp 9 motor. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and I'll reposition the camera here, uh, get my phone out, take a look at what the temperatures are doing on the controller. So it's always kind of tricky to uh, do this while driving, holding the camera, and speeding along the highway at 75 miles an hour. Uh, but according to my phone, uh, we are looking at a motor temperature of 109 degrees Fahrenheit uh, at this particular time. So, you know, again, that's 80 miles an hour currently. <laughs> cruising down the highway, and uh, yeah, so at this point I don't think the motor temperature is overly hot. Again, this is the outside case temperature, not the uh, commutator temperature. Uh, so there is that as a factor, uh, that uh, we're not getting a true reading of the commutator. Uh, but you know, just kind of as a general idea of how the case is doing, um, you know, it seems to be dissipating the heat fairly well. And, uh, you know, it's all good. So, I'm sure when we come to a stop that all that heat that's built up in the commutator will uh, uh, work its way out to the case and then the temperature will rise very sharply. Um, but at least while we're moving along on the highway here, we've got so much air uh, hitting that motor kind of broadside, as well as the fan blades in the motor spinning at 4,000 RPM. I think it's okay. I think it's it's doing fine as far as temperature goes. Uh, you know, okay, I guess fine is relative, but uh, historically, after I've come to a stop on a run like this today, uh, the motor has gone up to maybe 150 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is definitely toasty, but uh, or even 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's not really too bad. Uh, and while operating, it's not getting above much like 111 uh, currently. So anyway, I'll take some more readings as we get closer to home. But uh, it's a beautiful day for a drive. A little bit hazy. The uh, trees are starting to change. And uh, now I'm slowing down for traffic. So. <laughs> Alrighty then, so the final tally of our trip to Syracuse today was 79.6 miles on the trip, uh, for however accurate that is, and uh, on the JLD 404 we got 157.4 amp hours consumed, um, an hour and 19 minutes, <laughs> and uh, the pack voltage is uh, starting to settle, starting to bounce back up a little bit, but it was down to... Uh, 186.4 at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, motor temperature appears to have stabilized at 159.99. Now, that may just be my program uh, or maybe even the sensor 
not being able to calculate higher than that. Um, I'm guessing it's the sensor, so it's like 5.28 volts is where it topped out at. Um, and so just based on how I've got it calibrated, that's where we're getting. Um, now if I had an actual, accurate way to measure temperature on the motor, I could recalibrate the program to match uh, this voltage to whatever the actual temperature is. Um, but anyway, we're showing 160 uh, degrees Fahrenheit at this point. Uh, the controller temp uh, was 97 degrees when I pulled into the garage and it dropped down to 94 and I hear that the fans have shut off now uh, on the Soliton. So anyway, that's where we're at. Just figured I would share the, the fun for today. And once again, the EV makes its trip up to the airport in Syracuse and back without incident. Um, you know, again, that motor is nice and toasty, but uh, not alarmingly so, I don't believe. Take care and have a good day. Okay, this is a follow-up uh, to that trip to Syracuse. Um, I decided I'd check out the pack and uh, go through them all, and I kind of noticed something a little odd. You'll notice that this cell right there has a little bit of discoloration on the top. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And when I went to investigate further... I don't know if the camera's making up the cool sound it's making. But that is venting. Um, so this particular cell, which was the swollen cell in the pack before, um, that had been damaged previously on numerous <laughs> occasions, um, I think I've finally killed it, or at least have hurt it more. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here with the, the old multimeter to find out how, it, how, it, how it's faring at this particular moment in time. So this cell is resting comfortably at 0.48 volts. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas all the other cells in the pack are at like 3.1, 3.2, for that one, um, this one here, just kind of randomly 3.18, yeah, so all, all the other cells in the pack are doing great, but this one cell is definitely hurting. Um, it has come back up a little bit, we're at 0.5 one now and uh, as it's venting off its its fluids and so forth um, but uh, so this cell is coming out of the pack today I'm going to be taking it out and uh, shuffling things around a little bit going back to 59 cells um, which was kind of the kind of the plan before but I decided I'd give this one a try and see how long it would last um, and uh, I think this particular trip finally uh, finished it off but we'll see so what I'm going to do is charge it, just for the heck of it. You know, at this point, I'm not really worried about it. Can't damage the cell much more than it's already been damaged. Um, so I'm going to monitor it closely and just kind of see what happens as it takes a charge. Um, so we're going to go ahead and plug it in now. Always a tricky thing to do. Oh. Holding the camera, so there's charger kicking on, and uh, charger buddy is showing 190.5 for the pack, and gradually coming up there. And this poor little cell immediately jumps back up to 0.99, one volt. And as you can see, rising rapidly. So, once again, I'm going to monitor this very closely. And if this cell gets anywhere above, you know, 3.5, then, well, that'll be the time when I pull it out for sure and uh, shutting off the charger. But uh, yeah, I just kind of want to see what happens. Never really killed one of these cells before, so I figured now's a good time to document the process. Alrighty then. So after the battery was fully charged, um, it actually settled right with the rest of them. Um, so as you can see, it's 3.316 right now. Um, and the ones that are next to it, 3.31, 3.32, 3.33, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 
0.2. Uh, so it's a little bit lower than the other ones, but not by a lot, just a hair. From the 3.31 to 3.32 to... Point three two, so it is out of balance with the rest of them in that it is a little less um, charged, or has a little lower resting voltage um, when fully charged, but it's actually not too bad considering. Um, so rather than take the battery out, what I ended up doing was driving it, continuing to drive the car as normal. Um, I haven't taken any long trips with it because this battery was swollen and vented, and we know it has lower capacity than the rest of the cells. Um, we knew that before the last incident where it got real low, um, and now it's probably worse. I don't really know. Um, I guess one thing I could do is put it on the power lab and do a full discharge and charge cycle um, to see, you know, count the amp hours. But without doing that on another battery, I don't have a very good comparison um, to you know, how much it's damaged in relation to the rest of the packs, you know, age, um, and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm not really sure what the the plan is at this point. Um, I'm not doing any big trips with it because it's winter time now, and uh, the weather's really crappy in central New York. Um, all across the nation, of course, it's been so cold this winter, um, but we've gotten an excess amount of snow for this area, uh, as well as continuous days of below zero Fahrenheit, um, and it's just kind of been miserable. So anyway, um, so I'm actually doing this filming uh, of this part of the video in, uh, it's now March, whereas the previous video was back in September. So it's been a few months, um, been busy, been doing other stuff, and I really haven't had time to update my blog or my videos or, uh, really even drive my car very much. But uh, anyway, that's it. This is an update for today. Just wanted to finish this one up. Thanks. Take care.